like to give a good old congratulations to Venezuela and Iran as Biden is making their dictatorships filthy rich. He sure is. Just a few weeks after lifting oil sanctions on Venezuela and refusing to enforce sanctions that already exist on Iran, Biden has indefinitely postponed, or in other words, canceled a key offshore gas lease that would have allowed the U.S. to drill our own oil. It seems like Biden actually prefers to line the pockets of hostile foreign adversaries and strip America of its energy independence. Joining us now, president of the Center for Industrial Progress and author of Fossil Future, Alex Epstein. Alex, a lot of people are outraged about this, as they should be. Venezuela aside, the issues with Iran right now and what we're seeing in the Middle East, funding terrorism, attacking the Israelis, and it is the oil revenue that is allowing them to do that. It almost seems like he is throwing fuel on the fire here at home, yet he's defiant. He doesn't even care what people think. I mean, with both Iran and oil policy, we just see this bizarre anti-America, but particularly short-term thinking. Like, Iran has been supporting terrorism, supporting aggression against Israel and America, you know, since well before 1979. But obviously, 1979 was the big milestone. Um, and we don't do anything about it. And we just wait for some disaster to happen, whether it's direct or indirect, in terms of their involvement in the recent attack. And at the same time, we have an oil industry that needs long-term support in terms of long-term freedom. And we're just all always arbitrarily just shutting them down. What are people, what are investors going to do? They're not going to invest in an industry where you're not, where you can just be shut down by Biden's whims at any given time. If the Middle East can't motivate Biden to lease offshore drilling, what possibly could? I would be totally depressed if I was in this industry. You know, Alex, it's, it's frustrating because, you know, if you want to make a transition and you're Joe Biden, you're like, listen, we want to go green. We want to be wind and, and solar. Okay. I disagree with that. I imagine you do as well. But to say that we're going to stop pumping American oil, but we're going to get oil from places that don't like us very much, I think that blows the minds of every American. That doesn't make any sense. What's going on here? Well, what's going on, it's this idea behind this transition, just people made up that they wanted to rapidly eliminate fossil fuels, be quote unquote net zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. They wanted that because they think it's the most evil thing in the world if we have any impact on climate and we should sacrifice everything to that god of an unimpacted climate, which is somehow magical, the climate we inherited in 1850. And so we're just going to destroy everything. And it's just this primitive religion that sacrificed everything sacrificing everything again to this idea of let's not impact the climate. Like, who cares if we warm the climate a degree or two if we're all prosperous? We're still in a world where more people die of cold than from heat. So it's it's really a primitive anti-human religion that's driving him. And again, even the crisis in the Middle East can't get him to approve some oil drilling. Yeah, and by the way, I'll just remind everybody at home that our oil and gas, because we've invested in it, is the cleanest in the world. So you're actually putting dirty oil on the market from Venezuela and from Iran. Um, so if your goal is climate change, I don't really get that. Meantime, Alex, there are people out there who are actually having climate anxiety. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Well, that's nothing. A lot, uh, a it's, lot of them, unfortunately. It's nothing that an eighth of shrooms couldn't fix. So according to the Washington Post, those suffering from climate anxiety should try tripping out on psychedelics because What's worse than a climate zealot with eco-anxiety than a climate zealot with eco-anxiety on acid, mm. Alex? Uh, <laughs> what say you about the stupidity here? Well, Do you recommend shrooms? Do you recommend shrooms in our show? <laughs> No, uh, I, I recommend uh, this is this is my solution to climate anxiety. <laughs> also, the future go. right here. People can go to energytalkingpoints.com. But climate anxiety is a huge problem. I consider it global child abuse yeah. to make children afraid that the climate is going to destroy them in some near future instead of recognizing that the earth is better than ever and we're safer from climate than ever because we have a lot of energy and a lot of technology all powered by fossil fuels. So yeah, we need to educate people, but they've created this climate anxiety crisis. But instead of correcting the thinking, which is what psychology professionals are supposed to do, they're just prescribing drugs. Yeah. I wonder though, I wonder if the next op-ed from Hunter is going to be I had climate anxiety, <laughs> so that's why I did it. I, I didn't know. do shrooms. I, I did crack cocaine. Yeah. Alex Epstein, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us.